the positive trends on achieving the MDGs globally, particularly for the indicators for poverty reduction, gender equality, and also with certain aspects education, are by far not satisfying. Progress on reducing poverty is due, in particular, to huge successes in East and Southeast Asia. Whereas Asian countries have been quite successful in reducing income poverty, in sub-Saharan Africa, the situation only slowly changes. Also, Latin America and the Middle East have failed to make the expected progress. We see maternal mortality has not been reduced significantly in any of the regions, and we even see that the child mortality rate is by far not satisfying. One third of all people in extreme poverty live in fragile states. Economic growth does not automatically lead to a reduction in income poverty. It needs to be accompanied by pro-poor growth policies. The so-called Gini coefficient shows a clear increase and not decrease in the gap between rich and poor since the early 90s, and we see that it is still in that trend. The lack of correlation between growth in gross national income per capita and progress on achieving non-income-related MDGs makes social policies as part of good governance even more important. The MDGs are specified, quantified objectives with global and national impact. But they are not strategies in the sense that there is a direct link between individual development cooperation projects, the input and the outcome in terms of improvement. In fact, achievement on the MDGs depends heavily on global and national parameters in developing and industrialized countries. It is very much important to see that the MDGs are just a part of the Millennium Declaration of 2000. So the achievement of the MDGs and they themselves are just, if you were to say, an excerpt, because they are measurable, they are quantifiable. We firmly believe that the MDGs need to be replaced by a new system of global goals. Despite some major successes in reaching the MDGs, as we see, development still lags behind many of the goals. This is why we need a system of global goals beyond 2015 so that international efforts can be coordinated to address the most pressing challenges. The new system of goals should use and make use of the MDG strengths while avoiding their weaknesses. For us, this means that the current development agenda should be reflected more strongly and more fully than it was in the MDGs. Whatever system we devise should be as tangible and clear as the MDGs were, so that it can fulfill the very important function of mobilizing public support. We feel that the United Nations should lead the efforts to draft the post-2015 agenda, because only the United Nations can lend the process the legitimacy and acceptance it will require. We want also to see that in the future more potential of the civil society and the private sector in the design, formulation and implementation of such a new system is integrated. One of the great advantages of the MGDs was and is that it is a universal impact. And so global goals are a joint responsibility and serve as a useful orientation. However, only on the country level they can be implemented. This means that it's up to the people in individual countries to give such concrete meaning to the global goals and see that these global goals go directions of national policies. A new system of post-2015 will not be legally binding on the international community of nations. Where possible, individual country goals should be selected on a participatory basis. That way, they will play an important role when it comes to accounting for progress towards reaching them, and since they make it easier for citizens to hold their national governments accountable for it. So when we speak about governance in this context, we should see that the industrialized countries, and they are very self-critical, continue still to dominate G8, G20 to a certain extent, WTO, and Bretton Woods institutions. 
and there are only tentative signs of a new global order, and we see correspondingly that the multilateral fora in the, which the developing, emerging, and industrialized countries are equally involved should even be furthered and improved. Regional approaches are much more on the agenda priorities which must drive global initiatives as well, in particular also in the fields of security policy and economy. At the moment we see more multilateralism a la carte which dominates and it is of course of paramount importance that institutions like the Pan-African Parliament have their role properly being represented there. They can have a favorable impact on MDG achievement if the cooperation also includes solidarity. And we see the increasing South-South cooperation going in the same directions. Again, the active participation of civil society is indispensable, and we see that further developments and trends can be achieved also by the close exchange which has started under the aegis of the United Nations.